This is Brother Ron, and welcome to We All Be News Radio and TV, the news free Dixie for the 21st century. Hey, hey, Cali. It's uh, Willard, Q, and Ron. We out here doing the Hollywood thing. All right. Uh, took him out to lunch and just trying to keep him away from these crazy, wild women. <laughs> all right. That's your, hey, that's your boy. I appreciate We all be is on the have on the one and only brother Willard, Pugh, a very distinguished, prolific thespian and a man of the people and a fellow Memphis homeboy. How you doing I'm good, today? Good. Good, good thing. <laughs> it's an honor to meet you finally. I know I talked to you a couple of times over the years. Yeah. And one of my favorite shows was the Christmas show we did on December 2010. It was hilarious. It was very inspirational, very heartfelt. And it was funny because you told me about a recent project you did, uh, Kings of the Evening. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it actually came on the night on cable. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> I saw you in your element. How you doing uh, today? Ed Terman, uh, yeah. Ben Whitfield. Mm hmm. Uh, Stephen Williams. And Tyson, the model. Tyson Beckford. Yeah, yeah. Leonardo Washington. Uh-huh. It was a good cast of people. You like they had a lot of fun making it. Oh, we had fun making it. We had fun making it. It was just, it was a um, project that a friend of mine brought to me that they were doing and asked me if I'd kind of be a part of it. So, um, you know, I wasn't doing a whole lot of nothing at the time and I liked the project and so I participated, you know. And what I like about it too, I find out somebody that knows like y'all, it's like hidden black history. Not only was it entertaining, but it was also informing. Please, please give us like a synopsis of what's it, the story behind the movie. Uh, really a, a deeper movie than most people knew, which is one of the real reasons I liked it. I met Andrew P. Drone Jones, who was the director mm-hmm. and producer, him and his father. Mm-hmm. Uh, his late father passed away. Uh, this gentleman uh, researched the Sri Lanka tribe back okay. in Africa. Mm-hmm. And they used to do these fashion shows, and they would take on the forms of different animals and things, and uh, take the skins or whatever, and make their wardrobe. And they would dress up to uh, make themselves feel better about what their conditions and the situation they lived in over there in Africa. Right. And they could take anything, take nothing, and make it into something. Mm. And if you could take nothing and make it into something, then you got to be something. That's right. So a lot of times, people that think they're nothing, they're more than they know that they are. We just don't believe that we are. And with this film, it was showing nobody during the Depression. They brought that culture that came from Africa. Those people brought that same culture to America. Mm-hmm. And they would do underground fashion shows, dress up with whatever their best was. Mm-hmm. You want a, uh, $5, you want a chicken, can of peaches. Uh, anything during that Depression time was a benefit and it could change your life, you know what I mean? It could feed your family. Mm-hmm. So it was just about pride, having pride. We knew times were tough, but it's about having that pride and never giving up. And I think now we've just given up. Mm. What will make you say that right now? Because I just look at society, look at the world, and uh, look at people, look at especially black people, mm. uh, you know, my people. You mm-hmm. know, um, they give up too easy. They keep thinking everybody owe them something, and don't nobody want to work anymore. Nobody mm. got any drive. And um, during my time in the, I say the '60s, the '70s, when I grew up, I was in the first group of people that ever got bust okay. in this country. In mm. America, period, mm. okay? Um, back in junior high school, mm-hmm. Colonial Junior High School, they bust us to a white 
uh, a white junior high school, which was colonial, and back then, people, the families, the parents, threw fecal matter at us. Wow. In baggies, they had chains and guns and shotguns, and they rocked and turned over our buses, and we went up through all this kind of crap to go to school. Mm -hmm. And now we got kids that don't even want to go to school, and mm -hmm. it's free, mm -hmm. and they can go. They got computers. They got all kind of state of the art. Right. My mother had to become a encyclopedia salesperson in order for us to even own encyclopedias. One, we couldn't afford them, and two, a lot of people just didn't get access to them. Mm -hmm. So we had encyclopedias, we had abacus, we had uh, the atlas, we had the globe, we had a globe in our house so we could look at the real world. Uh -huh. I mean, all that came with the job is of being a, uh, a, a world book salesperson. So we got everything you could think of, it came with world book because mm. of that. And that's how difficult it was for black people to get information wow. and get knowledge. And now it's out there and nobody wants to take advantage of it. It really it kind of hurts me. It's because, like, we don't really know, like you said, we don't know who we really are in terms of, like, even that movie, we don't understand our power. Kyle call us the, the alchemists. We the alchemy people. Right. We, we tell you something still, makes something. We never know who we are. We still don't. There's a movie out right now called Get Out. Okay. Tell us about it. I yeah. love Get Out. Okay. I've seen it about four or five times. Okay. Because every time I see it, mm -hmm. I see something different. I see something new. Mm. And he took five years. And I believe he took five years because he got little bitty intricate things going on in that movie that are subliminal messages that most people don't get. It. Mm -hmm. And subliminal messages are messages that you get that you don't always see it blatantly, but it's there. Right. From the white lady with the black straw. The straw mm -hmm. was black. The straw was all intricate. <laughs> and she was sipping on the straw uh -huh. and asking about that girl's boyfriend. Is mm -hmm. it true? Mm -hmm. So like you think like a phallic symbol? Yes. Perhaps? Okay. Wow. Everything had a symbol in there. The stirring mm. of the cup, uh, the uh, bingo game. They mm -hmm. thought it was a bingo game. Well, the bingo game is an auction. Right. And they were auctioning off black people. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to be us but us. Everybody mm. want to take stuff from us. The guy who was in the wheelchair wanted the brother's eyes. Right. Uh, the one white lady who was with the black guy, mm -hmm. uh, that guy... Probably in her life, she always wanted a black man or her husband always wanted the prowess of whatever he thought a black man had. Right. And so she got this black guy he found in the neighborhood who was the first guy that got kidnapped and right. around him meeting all these white girls secretly at night. Right. Because since that's what you're going to do, we're going to give you one that we know got high prowess because that's all he's doing all night, running around catching girls. So mm -hmm. they got him, put him in that body, and whenever the camera would flash, he would come out of himself. Right. And he realized he didn't want to be trapped in that situation. Mm -hmm. So sometimes your own vices can come out to hurt you. Wow. Mm. So it's a very deep, deep move. I don't want to tell it all. I want people to go out and watch it. Definitely and I'm proud it. for the guy that made it because, you know, he stopped, I think, think they say he spent $40 million and turned around and made $100 million. So that's like either first or second to a movie like Blair Witch, which for a first timer, that's one of the largest grosses ever. Yeah, I think it was like million. actually $4.6 million or something like that. That's the $5 million. Wow. See that? <laughs> But well, that's the power of, uh, you know, like, you really understand our power to be able to do something. We stuff don't like understand that. our power. Mm -hmm. We will never understand our power. We have power in places that we don't even know. And then we get a little power, we scared to even use it or flex it. Mm -hmm. We have power in the NBA. Right. We have power in the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, we have power sometimes in the movie industry, depending on who's hot at that certain time, mm -hmm. to make a certain statement or to make a certain presence. Mm -hmm. And people keep not taking advantage of it because they think they're being safe and. At any given time, they can get rid of you anyway. Right. So, for me, I, I'd rather have said what I said and did what I did at that time because I may never get that opportunity again. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, this year's Oscars. I don't watch the Oscars, but right. I watched some of the highlights after it was over. And right. Stuff. And uh, I went back and I watched it because of Denzel. Mm -hmm. And when I saw his face, mm -hmm. when he didn't win, mm -hmm. now he can say whatever he want, but I'm sorry, that brother was crushed. And this year, out of all the years, mm -hmm. of anything he's done, the biggest thing I really loved that he did was Hurricane. He could have offered that. But see, that year, I think I told you, Charlize Ferrin did Monster, and that was a convicted felon. She went to jail and stayed in jail. Mm -hmm. He played a convicted felon that got off and was falsely accused of something later, getting away with it, you know, or got off from his charge. Mm -hmm. But it's the difference in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. So we justify things the way we want to. Because this year, for me... Um, 
Denzel deserved it. He put in the work as a director, as an actor. Uh, he did the Broadway play, which is still work. You know, if you don't understand, it's still work because stage wow. is harder than movies. Stage, you got to learn all them lines mm -hmm. every night you're speaking. When a movie, they could cut, take one, take two. You do 35 takes till you get it. When you use a little play, it's continuous. All right. So he really put in a lot of real work and he had to reach inside of himself into a different place that black men sometimes don't want to, want to go, and don't want to tap in to the things that we do wrong. Mm -hmm. We always like to know what we did right. right. And we always try to sometimes justify what we did when we did what was wrong. Mm -hmm. But he had to dig into that, into the black community, because him having that baby outside, right. him with his marital issues or his low, it was a low self-esteem, and somebody made him feel good after all these years of doing what he do. He couldn't be successful at baseball. He barely got a chance to drive the truck, then he finally got to drive. Everything that he couldn't succeed at the sexual thing, he did succeed at. Right. To be an older man, to get mm -hmm. that younger woman, made him feel alive. Right. Wrong choice. But <laughs> guess what? If people do it, everybody do it. Everybody uh -huh. want to feel alive. Everybody want to feel needed. Everybody want to feel loved. Right. So yeah. it's something that happens. And a lot of people didn't want to deal with that. Even black people didn't like that part of the movie. But it's a part of life. Mm -hmm. And our fathers and our brothers and our uncles and our cousins... So, to me, this year, if he ever deserved it, this was a year he should have really got it, and he didn't. And I personally would never, if I'm him, I'd never go to another Oscar. Well, my thing about that is, like, yeah, that's good to you for playing a nigga, or playing a maid, or playing a whole... Well, uh, look, Viola well, Davis got an Oscar this year. Right. For Best Supporting Actress in a movie that she played the best, that she played the leading actress. How do you get an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress mm. when you're the lead? She wasn't the second lead. Denzel is the male lead. She's the female lead. That's interesting because they know that they messed her over so years. They years. played the yeah. Hollywood play because she and Meryl Streep, I think, are very good friends. Right. And I hate to say doing that Golden Globe, that was too much for me, over the top. Mm -hmm. And after she did what she did at the Golden Globe, I guess they said, well, hey, you know what? We love you so much. We don't want you to compete against Meryl. We'll put you in as the best supporting, she'll be lead, and then everybody wins, and everybody's happy. Right. You know, you can't change the whole way the race is run. Mm -hmm. She was a leading actress that won for a best supporting actor. That's, that's I personally would have had to get my Oscar back. Mm -hmm. Because I, I knew I was a lead. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a nice thing to get one, I believe, mm -hmm. but I would like to get mine for what I really deserve, which is a lead actress or lead actor in mm -hmm. the role. Mm -hmm. And that's how they played it. Then they gave this Moonlight movie uh, the best picture because it was uh, a, 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 what I would call a gay agenda. Mm -hmm. And I got nothing against gays. I, right. I have a lot of gay friends. Right. But, but it was a gay agenda year this year. Right. And white America, again, as I always say, fascinated with gay thugs. I know too many of them. <laughs> I'm sorry. It ain't nothing new for me. I see them every day. Uh -huh. So to see a movie about them, Okay, mm -hmm. it's interesting. It's something new that maybe the average person don't know, but it was not Oscar worthy. The performances weren't Oscar worthy. The quality to me of the film, the way it was shot, kind of mm -hmm. low budget -ish. It wasn't in the category of the stuff that it was competing against. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you look at what it was running up against, it was it just wasn't in the category. Mm -hmm. So you had to reach okay. to get that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're going against a great. Fence is shot well, the cinematography, the musical score, the, the locations, the everything was just the right. best of the best. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So in this movie, wasn't that it was bad? I, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Janelle Mo Monet. Mm -hmm. she was, I thought she did a great performance, especially because I don't know her as really an actress. Mm -hmm. And then she did very well in the Hidden Figures. Right. So she, I see she can do more than one thing. But she's super talented, I think, period. Right. You know, I would call her the female James Brown. Right. Uh, right. So <laughs> she's super talented. Mm -hmm. And and could do more, but that movie, when you look at the quality of what it ran up against, mm -hmm. it shouldn't have won an Oscar. It was like we don't make them happy. We get gay and black at the same time. Black people need to be happy, and we appease you. So y'all right. get two Oscars. So Viola gets one. That guy got you know two in one year. Now y'all should shut up for last year. I don't get nothing. Right. Those are just uh, uh, gratiation Oscars. To but what do you think? Like, is interesting, like with the Brad Pitt connection, because this Plan B produced Moonlight and also produced Twelve Years a Slave, and it won Best Picture 
a couple of years ago. Well, I don't think that really had nothing to do with it. Okay. I like Bray. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, know, I, 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 you ain't give me something bad about him. Because <laughs> uh, what I know he did for a fact in New Orleans, because I went down there and uh-huh. I saw it my own eyes. Mm-hmm. A lot of black people wasn't doing it. I think uh, Lil Wayne did a lot. Mm-hmm. And I heard that, you know, that I could actually see somebody, people took me, right. and they were telling me who lived there. So I want right. to know what the people say that lived there. Right. And they said Lil Wayne did a lot, and there was a few others, Wendell Pierce. Right. Yeah, 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 over the grocery store down there. Yeah, right. Wendell was involved in a lot mm-hmm. of stuff. So uh, to have a white guy to really put the money he put, he put a lot of money. And then he built some incredible homes and made it where anybody could get in that pool to get one of those homes. Mm-hmm. Now, that's incredible. Then to produce movies that black people don't want to put the money up for to produce, I can't be mad at that either. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Is that, and I did, I, I mean, and 12 Years a Slave was a great movie. And, and, and But I don't, still don't want to just keep doing the same stuff over and over and over again. Right. We, we, you know, slavery is great, I promise you. Mm-hmm. I don't ever want to forget. So right. it's okay, but then let's do some other stuff too. And I guess they thought the moon, like, that was the other stuff. Right. That ain't the other stuff that I really want to see. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because there's other great things that we do with black people that people never touch on. Why? Well, like, well, I think with fences, like, I knew Denzel, what he did was a war worthy, even uh, Viola Davis. But I think for Denzel portrayal in that movie, it was too, hit too close to home for white people. He hit too close to home for black people. Right. But both people, I'm saying, it's, it's very uncomfortable because you know people like that. I know people like that in my yes. family. Oh, you know, like even when he talked about Josh Gibson, people don't understand who Josh, Josh Gibson was. Right, he and, was and like see, the black Babe Ruth, but he died at thirty-five yes. of a broken heart. And he may have, yeah. <laughs> Josh might have been one of the greatest baseball players to have ever lived, but never got the and chance. Let me tell you, I love some Jackie right. Robinson. Okay? Right. I got right. a Jackie Robinson coin. I got a uh, Joe Lewis coin. He's from Pasadena, right? Yes. He's from here. And I used to wear yeah. them under my clothes all the time. I never took them off till one time. I think something happened at the airport. And they kept beeping. I forgot. I, I had them. I, I mean, I took baths with them. Uh-huh. So I, they were always on me to remind me of who I am and what I am. And if these guys could go through this struggle, I have no reason to complain. Right. Josh Gibson was way better than Jackie ever could have been. Right. But he couldn't do what Jackie did. Because mm-hmm. Josh would fight. Josh would mess you up. Right. Okay? Right. 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 And, right. and what Jackie did took a whole lot. Right. He had talent and then he had the fortitude and that strength. To but Jackie had a temper too, though. Well, he did, but yeah. he, <laughs> he, Josh wouldn't have lasted nowhere near as long as Jackie. Well, yeah. for Jackie, we would not be in baseball. But it actually he took killed, a lot yeah. to, to do that. But it actually killed him early, too, though. He had a lot of health complications after oh, that. Oh, yeah. It, it, it destroyed him, man. Yes, it destroyed <laughs> To the hold back who you really are and suppress that kind of anger inside of a so body. So was it worth it? It's like it? a time bomb. So was it wasn't worth it? I mean, I had to ask you this. I'm interviewing you. I got to ask you. <laughs> Cause think about it. You make me want to get up and slap you. No, I'm going to say, think about it. Okay, you What had, do you think? I wouldn't be here today without Jackie Robinson. Was but, it worth it? But I'm saying, you think about what happened with the economics of the situation where you had, like, he was a player for the only team that was outright owned by a white person was Kansas City. Jackie opened doors for people in more ways than just baseball. All right. Okay, he opened mm-hmm. doors for education, for schools, for teachers, for uh, um, trash men, for hotel workers. Mm-hmm. He was a civil rights guy, even probably greater, if not as great as Dr. King. I hate to tell people, right? Because okay. he did a lot of things uh-huh. that everybody didn't hear about. Uh huh. Okay, he was an undercover brother that was doing it, doing it. And I mean, really doing it. Right. So, what do you mean? Without him, there would be no black people. Well, I would be sitting here talking to you. No, what I'm saying and is... And I wouldn't be living in Pasadena. Yeah, he's from Pasadena. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that I look at the economics of the situation where you had the Negro Leagues were making more money than the Major Leagues. Everything ain't about money. That's what's wrong with black people. Everything okay. they think about is money, 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 money. Mm-hmm. Money is not the answer. Because mm-hmm. we've had money and we've lost money. This is true. Yeah. Half the people in the NFL, NBA, five years after they retire, they're broke. Yep, so money has not been the issue. It's mm-hmm. how we use the money has been right. our problem. Mm-hmm. And how we misuse the money is our problem. It ain't how much money you made. It's how uh-huh. much money you got. How much money you keep. I don't care that people don't recognize me on the street. Right. But I know who I do love to hear. Mr. Pugh, how are you, Mr. Pugh? How are you today, Mr. Pugh? You know who says that? Who's that? The people at the back. <laughs> 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 they all know my name. That's uh-huh. the only people I need to know my name. Uh-huh. No one else needs to know my name. Uh-oh. Can we pause? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's going to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you shouldn't have to struggle as hard as you struggle. You shouldn't have to fight all the time to prove yourself or to justify who you are. 
I agree with that. So you think that as I, you know, like even that, like you talk about the the hidden figures movie, it frustrated me know that you know they hiding these black women. They don't want to recognize them. We didn't know about them for decades, right? Why I knew, now? I knew some of these people. Right. One of my good good friends, he's like a brother to me. His wife is like my sister. And his father worked in the federal government, and they, at one point they thought he was white. Mm -hmm. He'd have he got success in, in the federal government most people never would have obtained. Right. And I think over the years, and that's not to say anything that's negative about him, because mm -hmm. I love the man, um, I think it would drove him to drink. Wow. Because knowing what he knew and seeing what he saw and having to put up with that stuff again, just like Jackie Jack Robinson, Robinson right. it will eat you up, man. It mm -hmm. eats your soul up. Because mm -hmm. you know you see stuff that just ain't right. You right. see other black people that people don't know you black and you do you getting certain perks. You walk in a fine line and later on I think they did find out that he was black. But you know, it, it's an uncomfortable place to be. Mm -hmm. And I know you hate, at least I do, mm -hmm. I hate that people treat me different and then they see and I see another black person that's being treated worse and they black just like me. They shouldn't treat me one way and him one way because I'm a so called celebrity or something. Right. right. Be decent to everybody. Mm -hmm. But then I gotta realize sometimes we as black people create our own drama. Mm. And that's the biggest thing that we have to accept now. Mm. That's why I don't get into all that black lives matter crap. Because black lives don't matter to black people. Mm. And until we as black people stop killing each other mm. and talking bad to each other and mm. treating each other terribly, you can't say nothing about no other race treating you bad. Because we treat each other bad. But who did we learn that from? Though? I don't care who you learned it from. You got no sense to change your behavior. I don't know, man. I got no yeah. sense to change my behavior. And then people say, well, you're different. I am no different from <laughs> nobody else. My mother was a school teacher in uh -huh. Memphis, Tennessee, back in the day when they didn't make, I think, $500 a year. Mm. She didn't make a whole bunch of money, and she came from Mississippi. Right. My daddy uh, was a freight checker and only had a fifth or sixth grade education. So you, as an individual, are born into this world, and I didn't ask anybody to be born. Right. And then I had to make my way through the best I can with the environment I'm in, which... I don't think it was horrible. I don't think it was good or bad. Somebody said, you ain't living in the ghetto, ghetto. Well, we might have been in the ghetto, ghetto, but I lived around people that were poorer than I was, right. and I thought I was poor. Mm -hmm. So I knew what I didn't want to be, and I had friends who were uh, alcoholics. Mm -hmm. I didn't know many drug addicts back then. I was really small, but mm -hmm. I didn't know a bunch of winos. We called them winos. <laughs> and a lot of them winos changed my life, man. Uh -huh. I saw what they did. I listened to what they said, and, I, and, and they told me the things they had been through. I didn't want to go through that. And then when I was able to read and write, which is why reading and writing and education is so important, mm -hmm. you can read things for yourself. My daddy couldn't read the books I was reading. He only went to sixth grade. Mm. He know a lot about money and finance and things like that. And just from being around people, being exposed to different things, right. uh, taking a risk and getting out of my own neighborhood, going to the Memphis Children's Theater, being around these different white people who had done all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Those things broadened my horizons and gave me more opportunities. We just sometimes stay in our own little black niche and that ain't enough because the world ain't just black. Right. Yeah. I think I could be with anybody of any race. I've traveled all over the world and I, mm. I, and I ain't never met a stranger. Wow. And when I go places and people say, man, you don't know them people? Guess what? I know them now. They have, we have dinner at their house tonight. You, you Are you kidding me? I said, look, they said we have dinner there. Are we having dinner at your house tonight? Yes, Mr. Pugh, you have a dinner at our house. Okay. I said, okay, <laughs> all right, I'm with you, baby. Let's go. Let's do it. I don't know a stranger. Uh -huh. If you treat people like you want to be treated, most of the time, most of the drama that black people always say they have it, mm -hmm. we bring on ourselves. And sometimes, even though we, and sometimes we bring it on, I brought on my own drama just being black. Mm. And I know this, but I can't forget it. Uh -huh. And when I forget it, that's where I get really, really angry. Uh -huh. But as long as I don't forget it, I'm okay. And it's a shame that in 2017, I got to still remember that I'm black. Mm. To remind myself. I know we talked about a little bit, like, is it a frustration? It's like that you got you got so much to offer the world. You know, like we talk about black people for fences and whatnot. Right. You got so much to offer the world, but you got to deal. I, I believe racism, that's white folks' issue. Like, you got to deal with It's a black people's issue, too, though. But I'm talking about the hangups of you, like, the hidden figures. Jackie Robinson not the, never said the head. How he felt. But the reason he had to hide that because of white folks. They said this thing. Who created Jim Crow? Who, who he had created to hide white supremacy? White people and black people. Because there's a double-edged sword to that yeah. racism. Yeah. See, I'm going to tell you. There was a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was called. Was it Under Siege? I know it was Denzel Washington and. Uh, I know you're talking about that. Yeah. Gene Hackman. 
And they oh. said Lipposon Stallions were born right. black at first. Was well, it Crips or something? It might be Crips or Tide. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. And he hits them. Mm -hmm. Then he says again that Lipposon Stallions are born black and they turn white or whatever. And then he hits them again. <laughs> now, in real life, he uh. would never have hit Denzel two times. Mm hmm. In real life, he never hit a black man. Most black men I know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Even I know in the military, there are rules about your hierarchy and hitting somebody and going to the tank. But I know men, black men that I grew up around that have been in the military, they served time in the military, they've been in the hoop scowl because they did certain things. Right. You're not going to just slap them and they're going to take it. Mm -hmm. But if Denzel would have hit Gene Hackman on that movie screen, You'd have had black men going to work knocking white folks out all day long. They've been knocking out their bosses all day. Because if Denzel uh -huh. hit the, <laughs> the, 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 the colonel or the captain uh -huh. on that ship when he slapped him over a Lipazon stallion, uh -huh. and hell, I don't even know what a Lipazon stallion <laughs> right, is. Right, it sounds something like And I'm going to knock somebody out when I go to work tomorrow. When my boss talk crazy to me, uh -huh. I'm going to knock him out. Uh -huh. That's why certain things, when they put them in movies, they do it because it can set, a, it can set off a tidal wave. Mm. Life well, imitates art, art imitates life. But what about, okay, when you say that, I think about uh, Sidney Poitier in, in the heat of the night when he slapped the white man. Yes. I mean, that was very powerful. That was very back, powerful <laughs> back in the day. Right, right. So but that's just a little bit of that. And then uh -huh. back in the day, it was really more racist, and most people knew that was almost fictional. So you, you didn't really believe it. Lynch, they, <laughs> nowadays, as much as people want to say that we do have a little bit more freedom, uh -huh. we don't have as much freedom as people think we have. Freedom ain't free. Mm -hmm. And you can never stop working for freedom. That's what most people don't understand. Mm -hmm. It's a continual fight. It, is it ain't just over. Right. It'll never be over. Because mm -hmm. when I walk in a room, people know I'm black. Right. They don't know if I'm gay, straight, um, broke. Mm -hmm. they, uh, all they do know, one thing they know, I'm black. Right. I can mm -hmm. never hide that. Mm -hmm. So if I'm being judged by that, that's going to be something I got to deal with always. So when you think you don't have to deal with it, then that becomes your first problem. Wow. Because that's one thing they just see. Mm -hmm. And some people have been taught from early childhood that black isn't good. Like you talk about that toothpaste that Forrest Whitaker gave. Right. That, that's from either China or Japan. They mm -hmm. got a black guy, his eyeballs is really white, popping out of his head. Somebody gave them that, that view of black people. Right. And they put it on a toothpaste box and sell it all over China. Wow. So some some so some Asian people, when they see us, this is the only black person they know is that black guy on that box mm -hmm. with the top hat. So they assume when they see us, that's how we look and how we act. Mm -hmm. So that's why people don't understand the power and effect of things that black people do. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, it, is, it shouldn't be this way, that you mm -hmm. have to represent your whole race almost every time you wake up. Right. But guess what? Every time we wake up, we represent our race. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that I do, I know if I were to do something the other way, I'm going to tell you, since Trump got in office, Okay. This is crazy. This is really crazy. Uh -huh. I'm out walking. I walk every day. I do like 4.5 miles. I'm walking. Uh -huh. A white lady, her grandmother, and her two little kids mm -hmm. walking. I got my headphones on and I'm singing to myself. <laughs> and she says to me, can you walk with us? Wow. I, you have a beautiful voice. Can you walk with us and sing to us? And I'm thinking to myself, the worst of the worst. Right. I am not choked, you know what? <laughs> and I don't feel like walking around singing for some white people. Right. This ain't no minstrel show. For free, if that. Okay. <laughs> I said, but let me tell you what's going to happen. Uh -huh. These two little white boys, they probably six to ten, maybe. I may be the first black person they ever saw that close. Mm. And today, their view of black people can be made for life. How they're going to feel about black people, how they're going to look at black people, mm -hmm. by whatever action I take right at this moment. Mm -hmm. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. I'm going I'm to walk with y'all. Right. The little boy's like, wow, wow, I can't believe it. Now, grandmama, she knows better. Right. And she's thinking, oh my God, I know my daughter did not ask this black guy to walk with us. Right, right. He could be a rapist, a bugger, a robber. He could be anything just because he can sing. And there's no reason for him to walk with us. And they had their little candles in their bag. Uh -huh. And I think I was just singing whatever was on my phone. Mm -hmm. But as we started to walk, I said, you know what? I sang, everything was changed. Oh, and I so. sang, if I could, change the world. Mm -hmm. And the grandmama is now in tears. Mm-hmm. The little boys were, I think, just impressed mm -hmm. 
the white lady that asked me was totally messed up because that's not what she thought was going to happen. Because I think she thought she was going to hear some hip hop upbeat music. Right. And I gave her some shit to now think about. Mm. And then, so she cut the walk short. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> but I knew for me that was a, a teaching moment mm. where I could probably change those two boys' lives. And grandmama had just total guilt. Because if you know the lyrics to either of them songs, it tells you about how life can change and right. when we get old things That's happen. Like, yeah. And, uh, you know, she said, you just have a beautiful voice and and then listen to the words. She was in, and then like the little boy said, why is grandma crying? Why is she crying? Mm-hmm. And she had to explain to him, and she says, you know, uh, what he's saying about is really something that's really so true. Mm-hmm. And when you get older, you'll understand. And mm-hmm. so for me, if I'd have been negative, if I'd have cussed them out, right. or something crazy, that would have been their first image of what they are, uh, their lasting image, sometimes what they thought of a black person. Mm-hmm. So I think now the next time those two young boys, when they grow up and they see another black person, uh, they're going to come at us a little bit different because they don't know that guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes we have to take those moments to teach people even now because people still don't know because black people still don't know. Right. So don't act like white people go supposed to know too because mm-hmm. there's still black people that don't know basic stuff. Education has slipped us by. Mm-hmm. We got more kids not going to school now than we've ever had in our history mm-hmm. and I don't get it. And in Memphis alone, mm-hmm. they closed down Southside, merging into the Hamilton and I heard that now they're going to move Booker T or somebody else in there. That's like three schools into one school. Yeah, they, they don't. That's craziness. <laughs> and then they've all been rivals forever. You don't mm. take a pit bull and a poodle and put it together. <laughs> then you're going to just take humans and throw them together in a month or after uh, three months of summer school, you know, when summer school is out for the summer, and then next month y'all tell me we start back together. Right. It's a transition that you ease things into things. You, yeah. But that's because they don't care. They just throw you in. Mm. So my thing is to the students, you got to realize that these people don't even care about you. Mm. So you got to start caring about yourself. And until black people start caring about themselves and what they want for themselves, mm-hmm. then their lives will never change. Mm-hmm. My life never changed until I start caring about what I wanted for me. Right. Not for what my daddy wanted for me, not for what my mama wanted for me, because I knew what they wanted. Right. But I, I, what did I want? Because mm-hmm. they wanted, they're going to die. And mm-hmm. they did. And they're both gone. Mm-hmm. And I just said, where am I going to be? Because I can't depend on them always. Right. It was nice to great. They did great things for me when they lived. The best thing they did was the information they installed in me to make me be the man that I am today. Right. Back today, I just got a card. It was on the table from my first grade teacher. Oh, really? She's 88 years old. Miss Dorothy Akins. Uh-huh. Uh, Dunn Elementary. Dunn I sent Elementary. her an uh, exercise machine that's a, a whole body vibrating machine. Mm-hmm. And she just thanked me and told me how much she loved it and loved me. And we still talk. She does Emails, she you know, on the wow. internet, and she's my first. She was my first grade teacher. Uh huh. That's how important certain people in your life will be, and they will touch your life as long as you live. Mm-hmm. And we as black people sometimes we forget it. We forget our old people. We forget mm-hmm. they 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 weren't always old. Right. And if they really old, it took a lot to live that long to get to be that old. They went through some stuff, mm-hmm. and you get mad about the little things that happen to you every day. Right. And their day and time, it was way worse. That's why sometimes I had to just bite my tongue mm-hmm. and suck it up. Mm-hmm. Because I know people who are way older than me that were African-American people uh-huh. who went through holy hell. And this little bit of sometime hell that we get every now and then, majority of the time, my life is beautiful. Mm. Okay? Every mm-hmm. now and then you're going to have some spurts. Everybody do. Right. But some stuff we ain't got to bring on ourselves. Okay? Mm-hmm. You know, when we talk about, like I said, the law enforcement, the black lives matter, I've been a probation officer for... Uh, 19, 20 years uh-huh. and retired from that. I've seen both sides. And yes, they're jacked up officers right. and jacked up probation officers. And there are a lot of them. I work with them. <laughs> so, and they're black. Right. Okay? It ain't just the white ones or just the Hispanics. Uh-huh. You know, sometimes we hate our own selves worse than mm-hmm. other people. Mm-hmm. Like I used to tell kids sometimes, and not that I hated my own self worse, mm-hmm. what I hated when I worked in the juvenile hall system was I looked at them kids and it's like looking in the mirror looking at myself. Mm-hmm. Cause they look just like me. Yeah. Why are you in here? And I really am not different. People always say you different. I am not different. <laughs> I'm black just like they black. Uh huh. But everybody makes choices, mm-hmm. and the choices that we make now sometimes are not good choices. Mm-hmm. And I know our environment has a lot to do with it, 
But when you see it after this many years, change your environment. I moved. I got up and I left. Mm -hmm. I came out here with $500 and a Chevy Nova. Wow. And life has been beautiful ever since. It was mm -hmm. rough along the way. I promise you it was rough. Mm -hmm. But I never stopped working. I never stopped, you know, as kids say now, my grind, or my hustle. I, entertainment was what I wanted to do, but I kept a real job. Mm -hmm. You know, I taught at Chaffee College for 11 years, American history, uh, Amer uh, American film history, mm -hmm. world film history, and video production. I've had a video business since 91, I guess. And then I stopped it after about 20 years. Uh, I did the shooting stuff for other people. So, uh, been in the Screen Actors Guild 28 years. Mm -hmm. So, it ain't like I wasn't working. I was always working. All right. And then when you buy real estate and stuff, you're still working too. Because if you got property, you still got to work. All right. You need a new roof. You need an air conditioner to put in. Uh, Sometimes if I can't do it myself, I got to pay somebody to go and get it done. But it's always going to cost something. Nothing is free. All right. Nothing is easy. It may look easy. Mm -hmm. But we keep on something easy and easy ain't happening. Mm. That's interesting. I want to ask you this because I know you brought up a film. I just want to get your take. Have you seen The Birth of a Nation? Yeah, I saw the, the, which one? I saw both of them. Okay. I saw the original. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, the original is great because of the cinematography. Right. It did things with cameras that had never been done. The little iris closing in, the little right. black circle, the big wide screen that hadn't been done of a, a battlefield. All those were shot cinematically that had never happened before. We never seen something that grand. Right. But it's the most racist movie I ever watched in my life. It was mm. straight racist, okay? Mm -hmm. Chicken in the White House, people feet up with the shoes, all, <laughs> all kind of craziness. It was crazy. Uh -huh. So, but the new Birth of a Nation was different. Mm -hmm. And um, it, to me, basically was a Nat Turner story kind of. Mm -hmm. and, and I've seen several of those, some better than others. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was, it was good. It was just okay. It was good. It was, mm -hmm. it was okay. It mm -hmm. was historical. And I like, to know, I like to know stuff. I like to see everybody else's opinion. Mm -hmm. I'm not, my opinion ain't the Bible. All right. Okay? This is just my opinion. All right. Everybody got an opinion. They just like, you know what those things are. Right, right. Everybody got one. So, uh, it's just an opinion. And it was a good movie. I liked it. I, I'm sad that he had a bunch of backlash from his own personal drama from, like, back in college or whatever mm -hmm. that took all the heat off the movie. But, and nothing against it. We didn't need another 12 Days of Slave to get mm -hmm. an award. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And everybody was talking about how it was so great. And it was good. It, cinematically, it was really good. Directed well. Mm -hmm. Written well. It was just a, it was a good movie. Mm -hmm. But it caught backlash from his own personal stuff. But for me, it wasn't another movie that I had to get another award behind because why can't we get awards for just the regular movies? You know what I mean? Every slave movie got to get an award. We know what happened. And them awards is not going to take away the pain. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take away what happened. It's not going to take away the abuse. Uh, it's never going to erase it out of my mind. Like the other day here in L.A., they had mm -hmm. a big, uh, over 20, 10,000 people, of millions of people in the street for uh, Armenian genocide or something. Mm -hmm. Well, that happened over in another country. Mm -hmm. Slavery happened over here in this country. Right. And we ain't even in the streets uh, taking a parade for that. You know what I mean? We can parade for everybody, for every other country, for every other genocide. They want to call it genocide, but slavery was a genocide too. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Fair exchange is no robbery. Mm -hmm. Everybody got their story. We all got a sob story. Mm -hmm. We all got a problem. But everybody wants to see everybody else's problem. All right. See, I got to see my problems as a black person. Mm -hmm. I got to see white people's problems as white people because they got problems too. Right. Trust me, their problems ain't no different than yours. Their kids is just as screwed up as our kids. Mm -hmm. Sometimes worse. Right. It's more of them in drug rehab than it is us. Right. Not just because they can afford it. It's a lot of them that just messed up and dysfunctional. Right. Mm -hmm. And now we're becoming just like those people who are dysfunctional also. We try to assimilate so much that we're messing up. Yeah. We're getting every nightmare they get. Mm -hmm. Suicide wasn't a big thing among black people. Now we're getting more suicide. Mm. We never did that. Mm -hmm. So you've assimilated to some things you probably didn't even want to assimilate to. Mm. The drug behavior, our kids are all screwed up because we give them too much. We didn't give kids that much back in the day. We uh -huh. spank our kids and we taught them to be a little more appreciative. Now because we've succeeded in some areas, we give our kids too much. So now they grow up to not appreciate you mm -hmm. and the stuff you give them. And they do the same thing you always complained that other people's kids did. Because mm. you've assimilated to that world. 
There was nothing wrong with our world. The structure our parents, I think the whippings I got back in the day, sometimes it may have been a little rough, but I hate to tell you, I think it made me the guy I am today. Mm -hmm. And I thank them because I ain't never had to go to jail to get beat down, understand? All right. You know what I mean? And life didn't beat me so bad. Mm. You know, my dad whipped me sometimes so that life didn't whip me as bad. Mm. And by the time I got to that point of being an adult, I could see things a lot clearer. Because this was what, if I thought that was hell, get ready for, you really could find out what hell is. Okay, <laughs> son? If you think what I'm doing is hell, you're going to be soon to be free and on mm -hmm. your own, to be your own man. And you think it's rough now? Mm -hmm. If you can't deal with this, you surely will not be able to deal with that. All right. And a lot of people cannot deal with that. Mm. I want to think about what you're saying by being rough and thinking about Birth of a Nation with Nate Parker. Mm -hmm. That was his de directorial debut. Yes. Friend, but I, my thing is this. He was exonerated. Regardless of how people may feel about him, he was exonerated by matter. white people. You already forgot it. Yeah, no, I already forgot about it. What did I tell you the first thing you got to remember? <laughs> you're black. You're black. Yeah, but When you wake up every day, the first thing you got to remember, if you want your day to be good, right. is that you're black. Right. Because as soon as I wake up, I know I'm black. And then most of the stuff that happens to me ain't going to bother me. Right, right. But I'm saying it's sabotage by them. It is what it is. He but, was a guy. He was black. Yeah, but, but then, well, yeah, that's interesting. But then Casey Affleck, the issues he had with women that were, you know, he settled out of court with. Right. And he was allowed to not only, you know, have his movie uh, critically acclaimed or whatnot, to win an Oscar. Oscar. He didn't deserve you know, an Oscar. He did nothing. I think he knew that though. In his, he, his heart. Nothing, he, was, <laughs> he was bland and his brother's being and he got it. Really? He didn't know. Uh, Oscars did not define me. Mm -hmm. Okay, I learned that we went back to the color purple time because we got shut out. 11 and 0. Wow, but so, yeah, it's a, it's a favorite of a lot of people. Like, it, it holds up well after all this time. After all these years, people still recognize me everywhere mm -hmm. I go. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know if everybody going to know who Casey is. <laughs> you understand? So that ain't how, that doesn't justify. Uh, the movie that, that somebody see I saw it, it wasn't all that great. It just, they're going to do what they're going to do because this is their world and their situation. Right. I'm just living in it, and I'm trying to make it the best world for me. I can make it for me. I'm not trying to assimilate to be accepted or they're approved right. by them. Right. And when you keep trying to be approved by somebody, you're really going to mess your own life up. Mm. Stop trying to worry about being approved by somebody. Just do what you need to do to keep your lane because you, you're never going to get the approval. Yeah. You're never going to get that approval. You so that's thinking, the real answer. That's the real answer. <laughs> you keep thinking you're going to get this approval that you're not going to get. I can mm. cut my lawn in this area all the time where I live. Some called bungalow. Hey, boo, be just safe in a nice little neighborhood. But I got a neighbor who don't clean up nothing. Mm -hmm. And they don't do nothing to her. She's Hispanic. She knows certain people in the city. She At one point, I think she even used to work for the city. Mm -hmm. Nobody does anything. But if I drop paper on my lawn, I got a problem. Mm. My guy next door, uh, my tenant, he actually a uh, disabled veteran. He mm. dragged his foot. Someone turned in that my concrete was unlevel. Mm. And if he'd have fell on my grass, his hand touched the grass, mm. he could sue me and he could sue the city. Mm. So I spent twenty some hundred dollars to redo the whole sidewalk because the sidewalk belongs to you. Even though it belongs to the city. That's crazy. They should have did that. Right. Hey, that's how I feel. <laughs> the grass on the front, that little uh -huh. uh, parkway, uh -huh. it's, your, it's theirs, but you got to maintain it. That's cool. See, we, we, and we keep getting caught up in, 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 in little idiosyncrasies of the laws and rules. Mm -hmm. Understand it ain't ever going to work for us. Mm -hmm. So when I go in thinking that already, then whatever come out, if I come out halfway decent, I'm happy. Because I already know it ain't fair. The game ain't been fair from day one. Okay. And what makes you think now is all of a sudden going to become fair? Mm -hmm. It's not going to change. Mm -hmm. Not in my lifetime. Mm. And I can deal with life a lot better when I understand that. Certain things just not going to change. Mm -hmm. It's just not. So I already know it. Just be decent. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't kill me to be decent. Mm -hmm. It doesn't kill me to... You know, people worry about respect. Most people that want respect don't even give respect. But yeah, I was talking about it. <laughs> no, talking about it. They, they can't spell it, and they don't give it. Uh -huh. So how can you get what you don't give? And you don't know it because you never learned it. You really can't get it. Right. So that is really what's crazy to me. 
Black people they know the law and they know the rules and they got a lawyer. They can't afford a lawyer. No, you can't afford to play. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got so you, you, you're saying things that make you look stupid. Uh -huh. You're saying things that you think impress people, but it really is not impressed by making your situation worse. Mm. And then we defend sometimes the wrong people for the wrong stuff. I'm not an OJ fan. Okay? You about? okay. I'm not an OJ Simpson fan. Uh -huh. He's just black. Right. He was famous. He was rich. But I'm not a fan. Mm -hmm. But I don't think he killed his wife. Mm. Listen. I was talking about OJ, not an OJ fan, but... Yeah, I'm not an OJ fan, mm -hmm. but I don't feel that OJ killed his wife. Okay. What that happened for me was that raised the, the biggest view of racism in America ever. Mm. It, I mean, you, it, 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 other, the Rodney King was a big one for racism, and the OJ was a big one for racism. Because it mm -hmm. just showed me how really racist people really were. Mm -hmm. Nobody didn't care about the, the people, the victims, really at all. Mm -hmm. It became a black-white issue. Right. Because nobody thought about what that what the wife had done, mm -hmm. what the Goldman boy had done. They history. See, when you're prosecuting a person, the people who are the victims, you're not supposed to bring their life into play. Right. But I hate to tell you, their life is into play. Mm -hmm. Because certain things you do in your life could cause cause and effect. Yeah. And certain things you do cause certain things. To affect your life, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they live certain lives, and those things never got to come out in court. In the movies, they try to make it, and, but people don't want to hear it because they just want to make it just a black, white, man, woman, animalistic beat kill, mm -hmm. and uh, it, that's not always true. And I like to look at a situation for the real evidence, mm -hmm. for the real thing, because I want to know later in life what really happens. I don't want to just assume. Walk like a duck, quack like a duck. Sometimes it is a duck. Sometimes it's not a duck, though. Right. Uh, what's the guy's name? Robert Blakey. I think he killed his wife and he got off scot free. Mm -hmm. He's had mental issues and anxiety and depression and bipolar all his life. Dude, he was brother, right? The brother guy. The brother, yeah. yeah. They played law enforcement, so he knows about guns. So why are you going to leave a gun and leave her? <laughs> I mean, just certain things, it's just common sense, you know? But common sense mm -hmm. ain't common. Right. You know, well, my thing is like uh, I heard about the phone rack is like the cold that she had a, got a phone call from my mom, which would mess up the timeline of OJ killing his wife. Right. But they won't release the phone records. Right. This you know, they <laughs> said that uh, Martin Sheen got a new thing. I think on CNN that he says OJ didn't do it. And, he and Martin Sheen active. Martin Sheen active. Really? Mm -hmm. So he did he believe himself OJ yeah. didn't do it? Yeah. And I think he found out probably through his son Charlie. Because all of them in the same circle of drugs and women and doing what they did. Okay? Right. People that run in that same circle, they know things that the general public have no idea about. I know Cole, she was, uh, her sister was dating some gangster guys, Thank right? You. They were federal witness protection. Hey, I probably, I, I, know, <laughs> I know myself. I saw uh -huh. her one night at a place called the Bellagio Hotel, I believe. Okay. Up there off of Sunset. And my buddy, the late, great James Williams jazz keyboard player. Uh -huh. He was performing and invited me. I see her in the elevator with security, bodyguard, and getting to a chauffeur limousine, and she ain't got a job. Wow. So how's she driving around like that and ain't got a no job? Wow. Is she using the money from her dead sister's uh, charity foundation, which they found out that she did do, and that never happened to her. She ain't get prosecuted. This is Nicole Brown's sister. Nicole, Nicole Brown's Brown. sister. Wow. Used the money for her own personal use. She got a, probably a slap on the hand, but nothing never really happened from it. Right. So, you know, people just don't know the real deep story. Everybody like to run with the worst of the worst and just run with it. Mm -hmm. That's never been me. I'm going to give everybody the benefit of the doubt truly until you are truly proven guilty until I can really think there's no other way around it. Now, is OJ stupid? Yes, he's stupid. But did he kill his wife? I don't believe he killed his wife. He did beat his wife, though. But he, he didn't kill his him. wife. But you said... I, I never deny that, that he beat but his But she wife. had a reputation, right? For she had being. a reputation. The things that she had done is the one that he didn't kill her sooner. And if he didn't kill her sooner, he sure didn't kill her later. Right. Because the things that she had done prior, the, the Marcus Allen, who was his uh, protege and his mentor, who had been sleeping with his wife, which caused mm -hmm. his divorce, and then came out and was public and everybody knew about it. And that's the time you kind of get mad. I'm driving your Ferrari and I'm driving your Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So he was really driving. So uh -huh. That's wow. enough to make you snap. Right. The phone call the people heard, there was a man that she said supposedly had uh, uh, got into a uh, uh, 
a very sexual oral oral mm-hmm. situation that OJ was aware of mm-hmm. and did not like in his house with his kids. That basically That's the time right. when you snap. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, I don't care who you are, and you didn't kill I was nobody. Sad. I think and I was. You know if you're a man, and, and you didn't wife. kill nobody. Right, man. right, right. But right. supposedly this gay guy brings some eyeglasses to the house, and now you snap on the gay. So guy. I heard he was a bell prostitute, Ron Goldman. Yeah. Now, I don't know about his prostitution, but he was. But I knew he was gay. He was gay, and I knew he did some kind of fitness training. Okay, and also later out, he came out. He had over two hundred some thousand dollars in a bank account, and where does a waiter, or fitness trainer, get two hundred some thousand? He ain't Jill. What's the, what's the girl's name? He's not that. He's not one of them fa- famous personal trainers or right, Jake right. the bodybuilder, none right. of those people. Okay, and that's a lot of money having your bank account. So what you doing? Why are you bringing the glass? I mean, have glasses back to a person too, like to a house? She could just cut. They the call you. I uh, left stuff a million times. But to bring it to deliver it, and if they know you, they're gonna call you. They're not gonna send him to deliver it. Right. So oh, it's you got to work. Right. right. That's kind of strange. You, when you next time here, we hold him at the front. We'll bring him back. They gonna send. They have Ron let something going on. You know what I'm saying? So it's just people don't really want to know the truth. People want to know what they want that makes right. them feel better. Because nobody never testify as a, I mean, I know she's a victim. Of, uh, she's a victim. But Faye Resnick wrote that book. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She said she was a coke head and all Trust that. me. Trust me. Uh-huh. I ain't no. <laughs> and this pub, a lot of stuff is public knowledge, man. People just don't read. But you think that... that for themselves. That white serial killer actually killed Nicole and Ron Goldman, the one who's on Florida's death row. His siblings I did. heard about that. Yeah, I think it's like Glenn Rogers or somebody like that. But his siblings did a uh, documentary with ID on Discovery Channel. And they said he was a, a, a serial killer. He used to go around killing women across the country. And they were saying that he was there that night when it went down. Cause I think he befriended Nicole and Faith. They were all doing drugs at one point together. And that he actually, he confessed to killing her. And Ron Goldman. He's on Florida death row right now. See, that's new. I ain't heard that. Yeah, I think it's that Glenn Rogers, if I'm not mistaken. All I, all I think I can tell you is I just don't, I never believe really the OJ. I don't know what the OJ, but the, but the OJ. All that arthritis he got. Right, you know, the knees and stuff. Like, I'm in, I know he was a fan, but he ain't that fan. I'm in BB <laughs> King, and him and his son and somebody else was in there. Okay. And they got a guy to kind of be with him, with the family. Uh-huh. The little boy got loose in the restaurant, and they could, he, OJ couldn't even catch him. Really? So how the hell he got rid of Nicole and Ron? And Ron was a martial artist too. Right. So how you gonna be able to, like he gonna sit there and that he, he had the physical there, ones. He just sat there and right. let the man just do what he did. Right. OJ ain't the OJ people think he was. He was old, arthritic. But it was a commercial, like you said. It's like how they, they think about the, past. the Hearst commercial. He run through the airport. That's just the past. Right. It's not what OJ was at that time. I, right. None of us all. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. I've had. I probably had ten surgeries. Uh-huh. My back, my, uh, they told me I need both of my knees replaced. Wow. I had my carpet on in both hands. Mm. My elbows are sliced on both elbows. Wow. I'm not, I look halfway decent. I try to get up and do something every day. Yeah, but I would never know all that. Was, but <laughs> the average person don't know that. And people right. say, well, you got a disability placard. There's something wrong with you. You look fine to me. Yeah, there's more ways to be. <laughs> you know, think I about the soldiers you. coming home from I war. Just thank you. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them don't might not be messed up, but they messed up in don't here. Trust me, they are. So yeah, yeah. Everybody got their own issue. Right, and, and right. You don't always, everything is invisible. Right. And, and so that's why I never judge it. Just I don't always take it face value anymore. Mm. You know, I'm gonna really try to do my homework, and I mean, I do my homework, not just mm-hmm. what the media give it, because the media gonna always put a spin. People don't like good news. They like okay, mm-hmm. bad news. Make money. Good mm-hmm. news just don't sell. It might feel good for that moment, but then on to the next. Thank you know. you. But, and nobody want to hear you. Right, right. They want to hear you trash somebody, say something bad about somebody. Right. And I really try to avoid saying really bad, bad things because most people, I think, they nature that they're good anyway. They're not always trying to be bad, but sometimes people just do dumb stuff or bad stuff or make bad choices because they're trying to stay in the game. Right. You Try know, to stay relevant, what they call it. Stay, yeah, stay yeah. relevant to the Supposedly. time so they keep working and keep yeah. what they're doing. And, and when you have a family and, and, and your whole income only comes from entertainment, then that's what you got to do. You mm-hmm. know, that's why to me, I try to diversify and I got a real job and I bought real estate and did things like that, trying to do, they had a little restaurant for a while. You know, I've always tried to do other things that right. have other avenues of money to come in. So I'm making money even when I'm sleeping. That's how I do like residual income. You got you to keep royalties. thinking. Yes, you got to yeah. keep thinking about what to do. You don't just get it and stop thinking it's going to come forever because who gave it to you? Yeah. <laughs> and when the structure starts messing up, uh, and that's the whole structure. Of it's the happening now, though. It's happening right now. Right, it's going right. to affect everybody. It don't it just is. affect poor people. It don't just affect rich people. It everybody. affects everybody. Right. That's right. So people keep acting like it only affects a few people. It affects everybody. We all connected because we all we in the all same system. Thank you. We in the same matrix. If my yeah. gardener's hurting, guess what? I'm going to be hurting because he made a sign he can't come work for me no more. Exactly. 
If everybody mm-hmm. gets to hurt and they hurt in their own way, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So it affects everybody. Mm-hmm. And now with my knees and things, I need it. Before I didn't really need it. Mm-hmm. So now that I got these things going wrong in my body, now I need it. Now he said, well, Mr. Pure, I'm not doing it anymore. I, I'm retired. I'm going to go into something else. Everybody right. does the, Out here you'll see a lot of natural gardens, uh-huh. of cement driveways and rocks on your yard. So he may decide to go a different route. And it right. can change. It can affect me. Mm-hmm. So people don't understand. Everything affects everybody. Mm-hmm. But if you plan, you try to secure your own self, not living above your means, and try to live normal, you'd be okay. Right. And that's been my whole thing. I've always tried to just be normal. Mm-hmm. I ain't got to have, I ain't never had to be rich. Mm-hmm. I ain't never had to be famous. Right. I just wanted to do what I love to do, which mm-hmm. was at that time acting. And now I don't have no problem not doing it because I put in, like I said, I've been doing it since I was a kid and I put in more time than I ever thought I'd ever do, and I did more than I thought I'd ever do. I've been more places than I thought I'd ever get to go, and it, I, I was putting together a tape back there last night, mm-hmm. and I started looking at all the different people that I forgot I even worked with, you know, Wilford Brimley and people like that that were wow. great actors back in the day, and folks did really big movies, and I got at least Pam Greer, and, and at some point I crossed paths. Cleavon Little, I mean, uh, you know, I never got to work with Roger, but he's a good friend of mine, Roger Mosley from Magnum P.I. So, uh, you know, just the different people that your paths crossed in this career mm-hmm. that I never would have got to meet if I stayed in Memphis. Wow. But it's just the thing, you have to take that risk to do what you do. And you have to be realistic, though, when you take it. Most people aren't realistic when they take that. I did it at a younger age, so I had a better chance. Some mm-hmm. things we age out of. Right. And you have mm-hmm. to realize you age out of. Mm-hmm. You're a big guy, but how old are you now? Oh, 37. 37. You can't play pro football now. Oh, it's, oh, it's yeah, it's yeah so, right. Yeah. I don't care. They said, man, you big guy. You should be playing pro football. No, it's, You're aged that's out old, already. That's old. That's 37 old, old. And if you have not already been playing somewhere, yeah. we're not taking you. Right. You, you, right side. Right, right look. Right. But is that realistic? No, it's not realistic. Okay. <laughs> And now, now even you Tom Brady. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but he got to do things differently, though, in order to maintain the service. Even older, right. older, as he gets yeah, older, you right. have to readjust what you do. I've been in and out of martial arts most of my life, and I have to readjust now what I used to. Ain't nobody got all of them kicking in the air and all that fun stuff. That was fun. Just but Some stuff worked, but it's fun, too. Uh, <laughs> you can't do all that stuff no more. Does it bother you though? Like, does it bother you as you get older that you can't do certain things? Or you just adapt or you just don't really bother you? Just come with the territory. You know what? I ain't gonna tell. I can't lie. It, uh-huh. it, it bothers it's me. Okay, so, okay, okay. I know. I'm was forty. I'm fifty-seven now. Uh, I was you don't look fifty-seven. And we was, I played basketball. Uh-huh. I can't hardly play now, but I can still go in the whole knee, uh-huh. and hands, my wrist, carpal tunnel. You know. So I'll just go catch up with you. It all catch up to you. Uh-huh. And the kids was at the park up here, so I'm up here. I'm just shooting some of these young boys. You want to play? I said, Yeah, I will play both of y'all. What? I'm being uh-huh. look. They look. They look. They that good anyway. So I said, Yeah. So I'm playing these two kids. Then all of a sudden, they just start getting crazy with me. I mean, like, I wasn't an a, a older person that they're playing. And they was just, to me, hey, you come on, old man. Oh, yeah. Come on, old man, bring it. You know yeah. what you going to do? Uh-huh. And then the more they kept saying about this old man, I mean, just, I don't know what happened to my brain, this switch <laughs> that goes off in our crazy brains. And it uh-huh. happens to everybody. Uh-huh. It twitched and hit. And brother, I got possessed. <laughs> I think I played the best I ever played in my life. Wow, you did it all. And I said, I refuse to let these kids win because they talk too much trash today. Right. But at the end of the day, I'm on the bench. I'm exhausted. I'm laid out. I'm looking like this. They left, came back. They said, hey, was it worth it? They <laughs> said, <laughs> it didn't like that. <laughs> oh, oh, they said to me, was it worth it? Oh, the light went out. Okay, I'll shut it back off. That's probably the battery. <gasps> they even do themselves. Yeah, the kids said, was it worth it? They knew. So I like that, but they knew you was good, though, too. Oh, yeah, they knew it was <laughs> they, they, like, they knew it was you all. Yeah. They knew at some point, I used to play a little bit, and they said, okay. Yeah, best ball, tough, because my thing about best ball, I used to like playing best ball, but you get poked in the eye. That stuff be hurt on you fall, you yeah, drop over, you pull your, your ankle. Like that. Yeah. But you, you mean, got yeah. You gotta change your style up as you get older. But you look at somebody like okay, like you look at Russell Westbrook, who's doing like phenomenal, like average or triple double. And I think about Allen Iverson, them guys, they throw their bodies into it. You just can't uh, so well, you, you know play, what you I can't really change. Think about it. is Vince Carter. 
Ah, right, he's still playing. Vince Carter is the is the roadmap for longevity in the NBA. Mm-hmm. At his age, I think Vince got to be close to forty. I think he passed for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. he knows how to pace himself. Mm-hmm. He knows how to park his ego mm-hmm. because they say half man, half, half amazing, half, half amazing. Right. Uh, so he, but when he doesn't come out in them spurts, them spurts is good, and mm-hmm. he helps the team still. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure he's advising them kids and giving the youngsters some good advice down there. Mm-hmm. So he's done it the right way. It's like the Robin Ray Allen guys. Ray, they, got, yeah. they changed the, the diets they changed, and all this yeah. stuff. They changed the way they did the diet. They changed how they played. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's another one? Garnett, I think he did it. And right, he lasts a long people. time, right. He yeah. lasts a long time. Now he's coaching other kids. Other mm-hmm. people, big, well, they're not kids, they're grown men. Right, right. And, you know, but they're getting them younger and younger. And see, sometimes for me, I always felt with the NBA, they should have left people in college. Mm-hmm. Let them stay there four years and learn the game. It's too, too much money, though. Like, it's too much money. The money is killing the game. Right. Now the games are nowhere in the middle. I, I mean, it's just, it, it's a business. Okay? And we don't even understand that it's a business. Mm-hmm. Football, right. yeah. basketball is modern day slavery. Mm. People don't even realize it. Like you said, they end up broke for five years. Majority. They broke Everybody going to be years. LeBron James. It's the same thing George. they did in slavery. Yeah. They used us and we did the farming, we did the, the corn, the cotton, the, we made a bunch of money for somebody else. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the day, they had nothing. Mm-hmm. When, they, when are people going to wake up? Mm. Think about it, really. But is it too late now? I mean, be honest. No, it ain't too late. You know, okay. It ain't too late to wake up. But, like the, but you got to yeah. start changing. LeBron changed the game. Right. LeBron has television shows. He does movies. He has really reinvented this thing. Right. He's doing what I've always said brothers should have done. And I ain't tell you, Dr. J was one of the first. Right. Him, Bill Cosby doing the uh, Coke commercial. Uh, I think they got a Coke franchise. A yeah, yeah, franchise. I feel definitely, they started yeah. getting other stuff. You know what I'm saying? They knew there was life after this game. But you diversified you know yes. yeah, your portfolio. Dr. J could be Dr. J forever, and he looks great. Every time I see him, it's like scary. I think he's still dumb, too. I, mean, I saw a thing. I like, believe it. <laughs> he still looks great. I mean, he don't look good. He look great. Yeah. To be his age. And you know, the dude I met named Professor Kobe Smith from Memphis. He was his teacher at UMass. Professor Smith, he the one that encouraged him to go. Oh, wow. Yeah. Memphis, Memphis got powerful because they don't say like Memphis got a lot of powerful connections. Yeah, but I'm saying, well, a lot of people don't know that. But they don't say I'll get back to it. People in Memphis don't even know right. that. Right. Everything comes through Memphis. Like, even a like, lot of great the stuff. Earth people. Yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Right. Maurice White. Yes. Look at him watching. Yes. Marion Barry. I go to D.C. Yes. outside. They love Marion Barry. Uh, Holiday Inn. Yes. Was in Memphis. I'm saying Holiday Inn right now. FedEx. FedEx. I mean, Pig and Wiggler, first supermarket. Yes. But I'm saying, but this is what I'm saying. This is this is my problem. Like that's why I love Memphis. I say, damn, you know, if you got the sac, the world's second largest cargo airport, and you used to be able to fly from uh, Memphis to Europe on one direct flight, what's going on with it? Why? What is the problem with Memphis? Well, Memphis got all this potential and has all this greatness and legacy. Why can't we do better? Is it leadership or is it by design? Education. Mm-hmm. But but they closed down the schools. It's education, right. period. Okay. Lack of knowledge, mm-hmm. and then people don't want to go to school. But if you know they mess you over, like you said, like how they messing us over in the system. Why would you want to go to school? They know they messing you over and cutting you off at the knees. Okay, so don't do nothing at all. And get no, I was like, but like, like we said, but but take control of your day. Like what you were saying, take control. Of, like you said, you take control. Of your right, right, right. Like, but if you help people to teach you that, how to do that though? If people, uh, by now we should have it. Okay, it's been over five. Mom, years. Like, we not enslaved. No, Mom, more. Like, I'm okay, talking about this. So right. That don't work. No, I'm talking like this, right? Like, you know, Nick can tell me about this. I started thinking about it. So, okay, if a person told me that Santa Claus brought me my gifts, that like you my parent, and, uh, and you told me Santa Claus brought you this, you went into debt to buy me these gifts, you took a sack of jobs, got long, but you had credit to a big, fat, white dude that can't fit down a chimney. Right. Realistically. So, if and I grew up... you're going to grow up and learn that the little, fat, white guy didn't do it. Yeah, okay. but, why, but, but what hurts, it's not the point. It hurt that you would lie to me like that because you're the person I trusted. With you my know, life, and you, it's a person I respect it, and I believe your word was mine. I'm just saying, if a person lied to you like that about Santa Claus, Santa what Claus, else everybody, they lied about? Uh, everybody lies about Santa Claus. <laughs> well, you see what I'm saying, though? Like, if you're a person let's, I let's trust. real. If you go to church with your mama, right. who birthday is it? That's Jesus. Well, Thank you. Right. So what's the issue? It ain't your birthday, and you Right, but right. Okay, but they use so, it to uh, sell uh, yeah. You don't understand <laughs> what Santa Claus is? Yeah. It's a business marketing tool. But as a kid, you don't know. Uh-huh. That. Even as a kid, I knew. Uh huh. Even when your parents would tell you that Santa they Claus. Used to tell me, I used to get up and catch them anyway. I see my mom and them putting that stuff down there. We didn't have a chimney. 
But he did it by you. Know you ain't got no chimney in the hood. <laughs> ain't no fat white man came down that pipe. You made it look like a chimney. Ain't come in nighttime, right? But he came in there. Look up to my daddy's house at night. You don't got no. Okay? <laughs> he must have capping you. You ain't, you ain't coming through there at night. That ain't right. happening. You we didn't go through there at yeah. night. Yeah. So I don't know no white man coming through there at night in a Santa Claus suit. No, no, that's no excuse. Mm. That's no excuse. <clears throat> but it's like put too much on the kid to know things that. No, it ain't. Mm. Kids come in knowing things. They do, but they... Kids know yeah. more than they ever knew. Kids come in smarter than I've ever seen in my true. lifetime. So, so stop yeah. blaming it on those things. See, we keep looking for something to blame. There's nothing to blame. No, what I'm say. saying, like, I, I talk to... I don't call people all people elders. I call some olders. Because they always said... Well, the young people do this, but who are the teachers? Like, why they come here? Uh-huh, but some they have skills, they have ability, but do they have direction? Some of so them have direction, know, they still don't follow it. They make, make a choice not I to follow it. That's what it means all about. But they, but they are conscious. If they are conscious of the of the options, yes. that's different. But a lot of folks ain't conscious of their aware of the options. Not as many screwed up now. You can't do right. You know what I'm saying? So what do we all do? All these screwed up people. Uh, if, they got, <laughs> if they got enough consciousness to watch stupid reality TV and believe it's real, then they got consciousness. Okay? They yeah. just stuck on stupid. But then we don't have the family unit. Like no BP don't well, get the other We never had that. We even had oh, that. We may that's do, part right. of welfare. Yeah. Okay. When they started, tell, when okay. They, when they started with welfare. They started to give okay. shoe size eleven or bigger in your house. Mm-hmm. Then that means somebody living in your house right. is a man, and they mm-hmm. started to divide the families. So men left so you could get that check. Worlds, and it created this problem that we now today have with the baby mama drama syndrome, mm-hmm. and everybody having children out of wedlock. Mm-hmm. And I don't care what people may think. And again, this is only my opinion, and my opinion is a dime a dozen, but it's my opinion. Okay, right, right, so right. people can get mad or not get mad. All these babies out of wedlock is the biggest problem that we have. Mm-hmm. Why do you keep having babies you can't take care of yourself? That's a good question. Well, people didn't feel like they. It don't. was easy for me not yeah. to have children. I couldn't take care of myself. I'm having a baby. Even when I was in my twenties, I'm working. I'm struggling. Uh, uh, when I first bought this place years ago, and um, I'm sleeping in the floor on a, a, a mattress on the floor. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have a baby, and I'm on the mattress on the floor myself. Mm-hmm. Thank God, over the years, my career got better, and I bought a bigger house. And then, you know, now that I've retired, I downsized. Right. So, uh, I don't get it. If you can't take care of you, you can't take care of baby. And I've heard some people say, well, it motivated me to do something. <laughs> I don't need that kind of motivation. Right. Eating is my biggest motivation. Right. For work. Okay, it's worse than crack. I got to eat to mm-hmm. live. Mm-hmm. So, that's my biggest motivation. And I don't want a kid's life to be worse than my life was. Mm-hmm. If I can't make his world better, why well, bring him into this world? And we bring him into the world... Uh, I, I, I'm not mad. I, you know, some of these, and the women have to take their responsibilities too. Right. A baby don't make you whole. A baby's not gonna love you because you think he loves you because you had him. He came out of your body. Mm-hmm. That's I. I love people. There's a little old white lady behind you. Okay. I took care of her for six years. She mm-hmm. was my neighbor, and she's from Greece. Wow. And I love her and loved her as much as I love my own mother. And I only knew her them six years. Wow. And she was that good to me. She cared about me that much. She loved me that much. Mm-hmm. So that love that they keep talking about, they're trying to find but about having all these babies is just crazy. Mm-hmm. You're getting government checks for each baby, and I think now they're cutting that stuff off. Right. But there's no reason to be making them babies' lives worse than your life was. If I just think about that, I wouldn't want to have a kid. Mm-hmm. And not that my life was bad, but I knew I couldn't take care of it. I got to feed it, and it's crying, and... And got to change diapers and just, I don't know why they think this thing is easy. It's not easy. Right. And then mamas and daddies think it's okay and they support them and help them. My daddy and them never would have done it. And I knew my daddy wouldn't have done it. Did he have to talk to you about that? Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> I went to jail one time for speeding. Uh-huh. My daddy didn't even come get me out. Wow. He said, you'll be there the Monday. And he said, you will be there the Monday. Uh-huh. And lucky for me, my mama came, my brother, and my sister, they drove up to Sykeston, Missouri. And you know my races. It was racing. All right, that's what I said. Don't be out of there. You better be out of here by sundown. Mm. And they came up and got me out. Because I got my daddy didn't even look at me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He looked at me for a month in the face. Wow. He was at this point. He was that. I would never want to hurt my father like that. I never want to hurt my mother like that. And I'm sorry, she was hurt getting me out of there. But she did. Mm-hmm. But it, it hurt. It hurt deeply. And those things now, you know, we just don't, we don't care. And then we think our parents don't care. But you keep having babies, having babies. If you 16, 14, having kids, what can you teach somebody? Your grandmama the same age as your mama almost. I mean, just, it's, it's craziness. Mm-hmm. And it's, that's not white America's problem. That's black people's problem. Okay? Everybody...